glad we're not in the northeast. They're getting zonked with two feet of snow. Yeah, they got a big storm coming, don't they? Two feet. Two feet. Wow. Yeah, it got to Ohio and Pennsylvania. All the way to Ohio? Yeah. Really? It's wow. all the northeast, really. But oh, it's terrible. I'm glad we're staying here. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want two feet of snow? Oh, yeah, you used to live in New York. We were last in Pennsylvania. Oh, Pennsylvania. And I had to stay at work for three days one time oh, no. because of snow. Okay. They put us up in a hotel, but the hotel staff couldn't get in either. So it was like the breakfast crew is what was on. Mm -hmm. And so for dinner every night was breakfast casseroles. It's like <laughs> after the third day, I called them. I said, I'm coming home. I don't know yeah. how far I'll get, but I'm coming home. Yeah. He and the guys on the street went out and shoveled our street because we were on a side street. Yeah. And even if they do the main streets, they don't get to the side I street. I did all the one hill. <laughs> I didn't do the hill when the truck could come down or a car come down the hill. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then tried to back up and ripped off their bumper. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, I don't miss shoveling snow. And so or he went outside snow. and gave the police when they came shovels from our garage nice. and came back in the house. <laughs> I don't miss snow. No. Hey, I see I see a couple of people of you joining online. Welcome. Uh, we're just talking about snow and the big storm in the northeast and how we're glad it was sunny today and relatively warm. So we're thankful for that uh, tonight. We'll wait, we'll wait just a few minutes. I know we have uh, other people who will probably join online. Oh, I hope you brought your Bible. You're good. You're prepared. Because <laughs> I don't have words on the screen either. <laughs> we have our... You've got your app. Never, everybody online, be sure to grab a Bible or a Bible app because we do not have words on the screen tonight. My apologies. But I know you all have Bibles. Probably more than one, so that should be good. Several at home. Several. <laughs> <laughs> but, throw it up on the phone. Absolutely. Hmm. All right, we're going to wait just a minute. I see a couple more people coming online. We're going to wait just a minute, and then we will get started. Please uh, comment if there's any issues with audio or video. We're not plugged in like we normally are. Um, we're just kind of doing an old school tonight. So um, if you want to call an iPad old school, but uh, so please comment if you know you can't hear or uh, if there's something off on the video that will help us. I see a few more joining on. Very good. All right. Someone said that I sound good. That's the best compliment I've had all day. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Okay. All right, we're going to wait like 30 more seconds and then we will open up in prayer. We're just waiting for everybody to get on. Should be should be most everybody on. Thank you for joining us online by the way. It's good to see everybody on there. We have a couple people uh, in person here. We uh, last minute decided to move everything online due to some logistical issues, um, but uh, I figure there might still be some people coming in person, uh, which is fine. So we have so discussion tonight. We'll have a, we have three people here, and then we have several. Looks like eight so far, maybe more online, and uh, yeah, it'll be interesting. All right, hello to everybody online. So uh, it's going to be super important, those of you, especially online, that you comment in because we have some discussion. Because I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't planning on doing this online tonight. So uh, a lot of what I have is discussion. So hopefully, uh, we can have good discussion. You can comment in, like you usually do, and, and I'm hoping that you comment more than you usually do because um, if not, we might be done in like five minutes. No, we have. We have lots of good stuff here, but uh, I think it would be good for us to um, to come.
comment in and to discuss and just try this different format since most of us uh, this evening are joining online. All right. All right, well, uh, we'll get started here. It's just a few minutes after. I'm sure more people will kind of slowly but surely join in. Thank you, everybody joining online. Thank you for the, those who are here in person. It's good to see everybody this evening. Let me open up tonight with a word of prayer. Father, we bow before you this evening. We give you thanks, God. We thank you for the joy that you give us, God. And we thank you for the Advent season. We thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to be born, but yet to suffer and die and rise again so that we can be forgiven and we can experience true joy in our lives. God, during this busy season, even this week, even tonight, God, as we are experiencing busyness and stress and as we're experiencing many different emotions, God, whatever they are, um, I pray tonight, God, that we can just focus on you, that we can just focus on you tonight, God, and be reminded of what this is all about, the birth of Jesus, the birth of our Savior, the birth of joy into our lives, God. So we just pray tonight, Lord, that you would uh, teach us something. We pray tonight that you would encourage us. We pray tonight, God, that as brothers and sisters, we would come together, both here and both online, and discuss and edify each other. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, we got it. We got uh, Melanie's here. We got several people. We got Phyllis on here. We got Tanya. We got, I'm assuming that's Carla, uh, Tom, Marlene Ballard, and we got Patty. We got Sue. So we got quite a few people here in person. We have uh, Joe and Lolita and Brenda are here in person and myself. And I apologize we had to move online so quickly. Uh, we just had some logistical issues tonight. But I'm glad that you're joining us. And I hope that we can have a good discussion tonight as we talk about Advent, as we talk about joy. So uh, I don't know how long this is going to go. It might be a little bit shorter than usual. But... Uh, but I'm thankful that we can come together as a church and worship and talk and encourage each other tonight. So uh, I guess we'll start off just by, uh, we, we were talking about snow, and maybe some of you were here for that conversation. We were talking about snow and how there's a big snowstorm right now in the Northeast and how we're thankful that it's nice and sunny here. Is anybody thankful for the sun? Uh, I know that a lot of people move to Arizona for the sun, but... I, you know, it's funny, I talk to a lot of people, and they say, I miss the snow, I miss the cold. Anybody here fall into that category? No? Yeah. no? Sometimes, yeah. yeah. They say, I miss the snow, I miss the cold, and I don't know whether to take them seriously, because it's easy to say that when you're standing in 70, 70 degrees and sunny. But anyway, I hear that a lot, so we're thankful we're here in sunny Arizona, <coughs> and that God is good. So, I'm going to read a quote. And it goes something like this. It says, We must do more than simply go through the Advent calendar. Sometimes we go through an Advent calendar. We must do more than simply go through the Advent calendar. We must develop in us an Advent heart. We must develop in us an Advent heart. We must do more than simply go through the Advent calendar. We must develop in us an Advent heart. Any thoughts on, on what that might mean? Any thoughts on what that might mean? I'm going to read it again. We must do more than simply go through the Advent calendar. We must develop in us an Advent heart. And if we remember the word Advent, anybody remember what that word means? And we'll give you a minute to comment on here. Anybody in the room remember what that word means? Absolutely. Prepare. Coming. Expectation. Anticipation. We must do more than simply go through the Advent calendar. We must develop in us an Advent heart. In other words, may the Lord prepare our heart and continue to prepare our heart as we are in this Advent season. As we are in this season where we are focused on the birth of Jesus and I don't know about you guys, this, this happens to me, I don't know about you, 
But we do uh, every night at the dinner table something with Advent. I don't know if anyone else does. Every night at the dinner table, we do something with Advent. We read a Bible story. Uh, and, you know, I'll be honest, it's every single night throughout the whole Advent season. Um, it gets a little um, difficult sometimes if you're busy, if you're rushed, if you're tired, if you're grumpy, whatever. It gets difficult to do. And so sometimes it feels like just checking off a box. Like, okay, we did the Advent calendar. We read the Advent reading for today. And so when I read this quote, it resonated. You know, we must do more than simply go through the Advent calendar. We must develop in us an Advent heart. And I was just thinking about it the other day, so rushed, trying to get through the Bible story, trying to get through Advent. And I was like, what is the point of all this? The point of all this is that we would step back and be reminded of the birth of Jesus. That we'd step back and be reminded of the birth of hope, the birth of peace, the birth of joy, the birth of love. And so this quote really resonated with me. And any, any comments online as we, as we talk about this idea that you know God wants to develop within us an Advent heart, an expecting heart, a heart that is ready ready to grow, ready for what's next, ready for what God wants to do in our lives. Any comments in here? Any comments online? Anything that anyone would like to share in that regard? And we'll wait just a minute. I know some of you are typing. We must develop in us an Advent heart. God wants to develop in us an Advent heart. A heart that is expecting God do more and more amazing things in our lives. Any comments? It's okay if you don't. We do have a lot of comments about snow. <laughs> so. Oh, yes. Carla misses the snow. Oh, an anonymous person here said that you can go back to Washington. <laughs> <laughs> Melanie says that it's quiet when it's snowing. It's so quiet. That's true. It is peaceful. It is nice when it first snows. Unless you have to go out either. Yeah, you're just watching. Yeah. I'll never forget when I moved to Flagstaff, and I just moved there, and I lived down in the desert my whole life, and I moved to Flagstaff. The first snow that I saw, it was so peaceful. It was so beautiful. And I remember walking in the evening, and there was like lights on the sidewalk. I was walking around the campus. There was lights, big lights on the sidewalk. And you kind of see the snow through the light beams. And it was just so beautiful. It was just so beautiful. <laughs> Melanie is sharing with us... Um, uh, she found joy, um, talking about Angel Tree, uh, she found joy even when the band uh, had to cancel, unfortunately, last minute. Um, still such a joyous day. Still such a joyous day. And, uh, yeah, even when things don't go our way, even when curveballs get thrown at us, uh, still finding joy in the fact that God is good and God is in control. Throughout, uh, throughout the unexpected, throughout when things don't go according to our plan finding joy in the fact that God is still in control. And we saw it with Angel Tree, how many families we blessed. Um, you know, even though things <laughs> weren't like we thought they would be, still finding joy. Thank you for sharing. All right. Tanya Fleming does not miss the Northeast. She's so thankful to live here. Now. Amen, Tanya. Amen. <laughs> we got a lot of amens in that comment. All right, we got, we got a couple more people joining. Just want to say welcome. Glad that you're here. We're just talking about how thankful we are that uh, we're, we are not experiencing the snowstorm like they're experiencing in the Northeast. And we're also talking about, on a more spiritual note, we're also talking about this idea that God wants to develop within us an Advent heart. God doesn't just want us to go through the Advent calendar. God wants to develop within us an Advent heart, a heart that is expecting, a heart that is constantly open to how God wants to continue to work in our lives. So welcome all of those who are just now coming on. 
Um, we're going to continue on here, um, and I have a question for you. Just kind of move into some of our discussion questions. And those of you online, we hope that you can comment. Uh, we're going to have some discussion. My hope is that you can comment just right here on the video on Facebook, and uh, you can join in on our discussion too. We have a couple people here in person, and they, they're discussing, and I can tell you what they say, and I can read what you say. So my hope is that when we do these discussion questions, you would be able to kind of type your responses, and we can read them here. Melanie says that it's snowing in Coventry. Coventry? We don't know where Coventry is, but we'll take your word for it. <laughs> all right, discussion questions. It seems as though all of us eventually run out of time to get everything done during this time of year. In other words, the Christmas season is typically busy. And in the end, we feel unprepared in some way. Regardless of how much time we spend doing, preparing for Christmas, Many of us feel unprepared, like we didn't spend enough time doing something. Um, and so what are, what are some examples of this in your life? That's kind of, kind of an opening question tonight. Um, it seems as though this season, this Christmas season, is always so busy. Maybe this year it's a little bit less busy because, you know, everything's a little bit different this year. But um, it seems as though all of us eventually run out of time to get everything done this time of year. And in the end, we feel unprepared in some way. So what are some examples of this in your own life, in your own experience? Are you feeling that way this year even? Overwhelmed, too busy. I know a lot of people experience that and express that during the Christmas season. Just kind of an opening question before we dive in. Any thoughts? We'll give the online folks a time to, to type that out. Coventry, Connecticut. Coventry, Connecticut That's is where Tanya's from. <laughs> yeah, the Northeast is getting bumped. Yes, they are. some examples of this being true in your life and don't hesitate to comment I want to hear from you feeling unprepared in some way any thoughts on that I'll give you just another minute to comment Melanie's from Connecticut too really interesting All right, we're going to uh, open up to the book of Luke, chapter 3. We're going to open up to the book of Luke, chapter 3, tonight. So I hope that those of you joining us online have a Bible or Bible app you can reference. If not, I'm going to read it, but unfortunately we don't have words on the screen tonight. So Luke, chapter 3 is where we're at. And we're reading verses 2 through 4. Maybe you've heard this passage before, talking about John the Baptist. Before we read, Melanie's just sharing with us. Melanie's saying, I, I don't believe I've ever been real anxious over Christmas. It's always been Jesus' birthday. Amen. That's the attitude we should have. Amen. All right, well, I'm going to read Luke chapter 3, verses 2 through 4. Here we go. Annas and Sapphias were the. Oh, hold on. Let's set that down. I just ruined it. Sorry, technology issues. There we go. I'm going to leave that here just like that. Annas and Sapphias were the high priests. At this time, a message from God came to John, son of Zechariah, who was living in the wilderness. Then John went from place to place on both sides of the Jordan River, preaching that people should be baptized to show that they had repented of their sins and turned to God to be forgiven. Isaiah had spoken of John when he said, He is a voice shouting in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord's coming. 
clear the road for him. Going back to verse 4, Isaiah had spoken of John, that way back in the Old Testament, had spoken of John when he said, He is a voice shouting in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord's coming, clear the road for him. And of course, when Isaiah was writing this book in the Old Testament, he had no idea who John the Baptist was. He was prophesying, right? He was prophesying a prophecy from the Lord about this man who would come before Jesus and prepare the way. This man who would come before Jesus and prepare the way. So John is described in verse 4 as the one who came to prepare the way for the Lord's arrival. He was baptizing people. He was announcing the good news. Um, so what does it mean, or what did it mean, to prepare the way of the Lord? What was John doing? What was John the Baptist doing? What was the point of John the Baptist's ministry? Any thoughts there? Any, any ideas there? Um, and feel free, those of you online, you can type those out. What, uh, what did it mean to prepare? What does it mean to prepare the way of the Lord? What was John the Baptist doing? What was the ministry of John the Baptist to prepare the way of the Lord? What does that mean? Any thoughts? To get people to recognize their sin, their guilt, and to make changes. Yeah. Yeah, so to Lolita, cleanse themselves somewhat. Absolutely. So Lolita just shared that it was a, a, a message uh, for people to cleanse themselves, for people to uh, give up their sins. Uh, maybe repentance could be a word used to describe that. That's good. And that's definitely, yeah, absolutely. A big part of his ministry was repentance. We see that as we read uh, the Gospels. All right, uh, I'm assuming that's Carla here saying, uh, Soften your hearts, open your eyes. Amen. Soften your hearts, open your eyes. Absolutely. You know, just this idea that we have to prepare ourselves for Jesus. It's such a big part of Advent is preparing our hearts to fully embrace and understand the birth of Christ. And we do it every year not just the birth of Christ, but his second coming. Amen. Well, we just said not just the birth of Christ, but his second coming. Amen. Any other comments here online? We'll wait just another minute here. So... So the message in the story of John the Baptist, the message is um, a life of readiness, a life of being prepared, right? That's kind of the story, a life of readiness, a life of being prepared for the Lord's work in us. So the idea is that God wants to work in us, and we need to be prepared. I mean, that's kind of a big part of the idea behind Advent. God wants to work in our lives. And we need to prepare ourselves for that. So just a question for you, and, and we'd, I'd love to hear your comments. Just a question. How do we ignore or miss what God is wanting to do in our lives? How do we ignore or miss what God is wanting to do in our lives? How has this been true in your life? Maybe there's something you want to share. Maybe there's something you don't want to share. That's okay. But maybe there's something you want to share. How do we ignore or miss what God is wanting to do in our lives? How has this been true in your life? I'm curious to hear your response. We get stubborn attitudes and just tune him out. Well, he just says we get stubborn attitudes and tune God out. That's very true. That's very true. We can relate to that. How do we ignore or miss what God wants to do in our lives? How has this been true in your life? And we'll read the comments that come in. Tanya says, when we're too busy for him. When we're too busy for him. 
How do we ignore or miss what God is wanting to do in our lives? How has this been true in your life? Love to hear some comments. Give just another minute for people to comment in. How do we ignore or miss what God wants to do in our lives? I know we all have a story of this. So many times when I get distracted by day-to-day -day life. Maybe you can relate to that. I get distracted from day-to-day -day life. And God wants to teach me something. You know, God wants me to do something a certain way. Handle a situation a certain way. Learn something from something that I'm dealing with. And I'm just totally in my own world. Not really paying attention to how God wants to work. Maybe you can relate. Maybe you get so caught up in busyness. Maybe you get so caught up in your own plans that you miss what God wants to do with your day. I apologize if it's getting warm in here. We can, uh, if anyone wants to turn the heat down, they can. We started talking about snow and uh, turn the heater up and then... Uh, now we're sweating in here. Okay. Well, let me ask you this question. I hope you respond. Let me ask you this question. What life experiences were you unprepared for? Talk about being prepared. You know, what life experiences were you unprepared for? And as a result, you had to turn to God very quickly. You were unprepared. And as a result, you had to turn to God very quickly and say, God, I need you. I'm totally oblivious, I'm totally incompetent, unqualified, help me deal with this situation. Love to hear your responses. What life experiences were you unprepared for, and as a result, you had to turn to God very quickly? Love to hear your comments. Just another minute here to comment. Question is, what life experiences were you unprepared for? And as a result, turn to God very quickly. Anyone brave enough to comment? Becoming a mother. Oh, Lolita says becoming a mother. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, I can relate to that. Melanie says many. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I can totally relate to that. Um, that's the way I describe it, you know. It seems like every year, every season, there's something that I'm not prepared for. Um, a lot of that's just ministry. But uh, I said, well, in 2020, I've gone through everything. You know, I've been in ministry how many years? Not that long, but probably seven, eight years at that point. So it's 2020, I've gone through it all, then 2020, no, <laughs> 2020 has been a season of learning and growing for all of us, Yeah. in a lot of different ways, you know, yep. wow, Melanie says being married and your parents getting older, wow, that's true, <laughs> that too, been there, done that, that's very true, yeah, amen, thank you Melanie for sharing, anybody else?
2020 took 20 years. It took 20 years off, off our lives. Right. <laughs> uh, I don't think that's in a positive way. Right. 20 years. We've experienced 20 <coughs> years of things in 2020. That's probably accurate. Wow. Hopefully 2021 is not as crazy. But God is good. He's carried us through, you know. He's carried us through. I look back, you know, talking about being, being unprepared. Maybe you can relate to this. I look back in my own life and I'll have something I'm dealing with and I'll say, well, I'm never going to make it through this, you know. There's no way I'm going to make it through this. Or I know this situation is going to end up like this. But God carries us through. you know. And oftentimes we learn and we grow from those experiences. Yeah. I was reading a book the other day written by a pastor. And he says that even from when you are just a young child, even from when you're just a young child, God is using different experiences to grow you and mold you and sanctify you and teach you for the things that he has prepared for you, maybe even way into your adult years. Yeah. Even as a young child, through your teen years, through your young adult years, through your adult years, God uses different experiences, different paths, different upbringings, different challenges. And many times he has a specific plan for why you dealt with that and how he's going to use that. That's so true, isn't it? All right. Well, let me uh, let me ask another question then. On a more positive note, what sorts of things do you do on a consistent basis to stay alert and prepared for God's work in your life? So we're talking about Advent, being prepared. Be prepared for how God wants to work in our lives. So, and maybe we asked a similar question last week, but it's a good one. What sorts of things do you do in your life to stay prepared, to ensure that you are prepared for how God wants to work in your life today, this week, this season? What practices, what disciplines, what mental notes, whatever, what things do you do to stay prepared? I'd love to hear your responses. Real quick, Phyllis, Phyllis Johnston commented, It has made us think of many things we have taken for granted, church, family, etc. Come on in. <laughs> Carla says, Start the day with the word. Amen. Mm -hmm. Capital W word. And end it the same way, Lolita says. Melanie says, Amen. Is it snowing out there, Tanya? <laughs> it is in the Northeast. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. I'm laughing about it. Yes. We were, too. Because we're here. He was talking to I had to a him. friend that said um, what she's going to do tomorrow. Shovel, shovel. Go in and have hot chocolate. Shovel. Shovel. Wow. <laughs> you know, have my husband shovel. <laughs> yeah. You know. He was talking to his daughter in Ohio. And he asked her what she was doing. She said, looking at the snow. <laughs> yeah. So we're having a little conversation here. Uh, people, friends that we have that live in the Northeast, and how their plans for tomorrow are shoveling snow. <laughs> and how we're thankful that shoveling snow is hopefully not in our plans. Maybe it is, but hopefully not. No. Hopefully not. Although I've heard it's supposed to snow up in the mountains. Unless you're going up in the mountains, we should be good. Okay. So let me just read this question one more time. What sorts of things do you do on a consistent basis to stay alert, to stay prepared for how God wants to work in your life today? Carla says, start the day with the word. Any other thoughts on that? What do you do? I'd love to hear. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Love to hear your experience. What do you do to stay prepared? Pray. Pray. Tanya says, pray. Pray consistently. Amen. Let's give you 
just a minute to comment online. What sorts of things do you do on a consistent basis to stay alert and prepared for God's work in your life? You know, I try to ask God on a regular basis, God, how do you want to use me today? How do you want to use me in the next hour? You know, whether you go go out and interact with people, God, how do you want to use me? Many times, He does. But sometimes, my eyes aren't open to the ways He wants to use me. Sometimes I'm so focused on getting done what I need to get done that I am not looking for opportunities to share God's grace with people. Since your series on um, putting on the armor of God, I've been more aware of doing that. Mm. So, Amen. That's another good way. <laughs> yeah, Tanya says, uh, putting on the armor of God, since we talked about it several weeks ago, that's been something, that's, that's good, putting on God's armor every day, mm-hmm. kind of visualizing it, right? Yeah. Visualizing it. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Patty says, go to our daily word devotional and pray. Amen. Devotionals, prayer, God's word. These are things that keep us prepared for how God wants to work. You know, waking up in the morning and making God's word the first thing that enters your mind. Going to bed and making God's word the last thing that you read. It's huge. It makes a big difference. There was a uh, statistic or quote or study that suggested, you know, basically what you spend the first 15 minutes, 30 minutes of your day doing will kind of dictate the rest of your day. And that's why they say making your bed is so important. Because when you make your bed, it puts you on a productive track. Now, that's not spiritual, but what if we started our day by opening up God's Word? Would it put us on a spiritual track for the rest of our day? Focused on how God wants to work in our lives. All right. Well, thank you all for uh, your comments, for commenting. I'm going to read a verse out of Romans chapter 15, verse 13. The Bible tells us this. Because I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in Him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Romans 15, 13. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in Him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the of the Holy Spirit. This is the New Living Translation. And it refers to God as the source of hope. And that this source of hope will fill us with joy and peace. If we want to experience God's grace in our lives, if we want to be prepared, we have to go to the source. We have to go to God. Thankfully, we have the Holy Spirit working in our lives. When we read God's Word, since the Holy Spirit lives in us, since God lives in us in that way, when we read God's Word, He illuminates it for us. You ever read a verse or read a passage, and you're like, God, you were speaking to me right there. You ever done that? (laughs) You know what? Sometimes I'll go to the Bible app, and you ever done the verse of the day on the Bible app? There's several verses of the day. But sometimes I'll click the verse of the day and I'll read it. And it's like, wow! I needed, to, I needed to read that for this situation that I'm dealing with right now that's right in front of me. You ever been there? Yep. That's the Holy Spirit working. I remember sitting in my bedroom one evening several years ago reading the New Testament. And it was like I was reading a lot of chapters that night. And it's like every single chapter 
applied to my life in a different way, very applicably applied to my life in a different way. And it's like, wow, God. You know, it's like every chapter I read, you're teaching me something different for a situation that I'm dealing with right now. And maybe those of you online, those of you here can relate to that. The Holy Spirit's at work all around us all the time. And so speaking of the Holy Spirit, Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. Does anybody have that memorized? That's true. That's true. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, this week talking about, or yeah, this tonight talking about joy. Yeah, it's one of the fruits. And then, uh, yeah, love, joy, and peace. Why isn't hope a fruit? I don't know. Maybe it's uh, an unwritten fruit. Who knows? We know the Holy Spirit gives us hope. But, uh, <laughs> right? It's not like other other fruits. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe that's not the right word, but it's, <laughs> it's yeah. for you only. Yeah. Yeah. That's something. Yeah. You can it's share. for you. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. So the others are things you can share with other people. It's like you can't share your hope. You can tell them why you have. Carla says, good job, Brenda. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. It's good to memorize scripture. Mm-hmm. So kind of as we move towards closing, um, book of John, chapter 16, verse 22. Look it up if you have a Bible. I apologize. We do not have words on the screen tonight. I see a couple of you just joined. I apologize, we don't have words on the screen tonight. But if you have a Bible or a Bible app on your phone, John 16, 22. These are the words of Jesus, so powerful. Here's what he tells us. Here's what Jesus tells us. He says, so you have sorrow now, but I will see you again. Then you will rejoice, and no one can rob you of that joy. Here's what Jesus tells his disciples. So you have sorrow now, but... I will see you again. Then you will rejoice, and no one can rob you of that joy. We're talking about joy this week. We have a joy in Jesus that can never be taken from us. That's powerful. That's powerful. We even talked about it Sunday when Jesus went to the cross. When Jesus went to the cross to suffer and die, he experienced joy. You know, the Bible says that. He experienced joy in Hebrews chapter... I can't remember the chapter off the top of my head. Chapter 12, maybe. I can't remember. I think it's chapter 12. Jesus experienced joy when he went to the cross. Isn't that crazy? First Peter, which one was that? One eight nine. First Peter chapter one verses eight and nine. Brenda just read. First Peter chapter one verses eight and nine. And I think we can relate to that, can't we? You know, we've never seen Jesus. I don't know about you, I've never seen Jesus with my eyes, but we've experienced Jesus and we've experienced the joy that he gives us. What's that? That joy is not because of what's going on around here. Yeah. It's only because of yeah. not his sacrifice, his resurrection, his promise to come again. Yeah. 
Yeah, Brenda mentioned that the joy that we have in Jesus is not based on what's going around here. It's based on our relationship with God and the joy that he gives us. Hebrews 12.2. Hebrews 12.2. Read it. Regarding you love him even though you have never seen him. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion, who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross. That's just such a crazy verse, isn't it? But the author is proving the point. There's joy in obedience. And speaking of joy and obedience, open up to Psalm chapter 51, verse 12. Psalm 51, verse 12. And this is the last uh, this is the last verse I have in my notes. Psalm 51, verse 12. Here's what it tells us. It says, it's a you know, it's a prayer. It says, Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and make me willing to obey you. Kind of a Prayer of, uh, prayer of repentance, right? Restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. There's joy found in God's saving grace. And that's a joy that can never be taken from us. And it comes, in part, it comes through obedience. In part, it comes through obedience. Obeying God brings us joy. You ever found that to be true in your life? Mm -hmm. Obedience to God and His path brings us joy. <laughs> There's been many things God has called me to do that I didn't want to do. You ever been there? Yep. There's things that God has called me to do that I didn't want to do, but after I do them, I experience joy. And I... I that's true. That's true all the time. I probably experience that at least once a week. <laughs> God says, I want you to go here and do this or help with this or, you know, talk to this person or volunteer with this or help out this person with this. <laughs> and I say, God, no way. I don't want to do that. i got too much to do. You ever been there? Yep. But... God takes care of all that stuff that we have to do and then gives us joy for helping out. Yeah. So true. Any closing thoughts? Anybody here? Anybody online? Any closing thoughts? We'll give you a minute to type them out. As we talk about joy, as we talk about Advent, as we talk about being prepared. That's the big theme for tonight. Being prepared for what God wants to do in our lives being prepared for the work that God wants to do in our lives. Not just this year, but every single day. I think God wants to teach us something, show us something, encourage us in some way every single day. I mean, think about it. What if you would just start your day and say, God, I got you know, 12 hours of my day, 18 hours of my day, whatever. Teach me, show me, speak to me, use me. If you just make that a prayer every morning, do you think God would use you? Do you think God would use you to make a difference? Do you think God would lead people in your life you could witness to or pray for, invite to church, encourage? Do you think there would be people that God would use you to bless? Do you think there's things that God would teach you? We miss out on so much by living such a selfish life, don't we? We miss out on so much. Living such a selfish life sometimes. Living such a self-centered life, we miss out on so many things that God wants to teach us. But the self-centered life is easy and it's pleasurable and it's familiar and it's predictable. And we like it, you know. But if we would just let go and allow God to lead us every moment of every day, into new territory, new challenges. Lead us to people who we can reach out to and pray for and have conversations with and get out of our comfort zone. 
how much more joy filled would our, would our lives be? You know? It's crazy to think about. And so we end up, we end up robbing ourselves of so much joy, don't we? By being self-centered. And not allowing God to just use us every moment of every day. Well, that's all I got tonight. Anybody else have any closing thoughts? Anybody online have any closing thoughts? I hope that this week and this Advent season, we can remember to be prepared for how God wants to use us each and every day. When we ask the question, you know, what habits, what things, what practices do you have in your life to ensure that you are prepared? So be thinking about that tonight as you go to sleep, as you enjoy your evening. Think about that. How does God want to, you know, what, what practices can we, can we take part of so that we would be prepared for how God wants to work? We talked about prayer. We talked about reading God's Word. We talked about reading devotions. We talked about this idea that we would kind of be in constant contact with God all throughout the day. God, use me. God teach me. You walking into Safeway in Anthem. God use me. Who do I need to pray for? Who could, who can I encourage today? Yeah. Well, that's all I've got tonight. Anybody have anything? Well, Lolita, you want to come up here and close us in prayer? We talked about joy this evening, and I get joy just when I think about what the Lord has done for me. I mean, when I go back into my early childhood and think about the type of child that I was, which was not always real good, I got many spankings and harsh words, I'll say from mother and father and the things that I got myself into God always got me out of even if I didn't think that he was getting me out of it he did so I can get joy just thinking about all of what he's done for me from my earliest days up to my present days and we talked about how we miss joy when we don't make time for God. And I can remember when I was in ministry full time, I was too busy, way too busy. I think you mentioned that earlier. And it reminded me of this song, which the Lord took me to when I was in ministry. It says, I miss my time with you. It was written by Larnell Harris and Phil McHugh. And it says, There he was just waiting in our old familiar place, an empty spot beside him where once I used to wait to be filled with strength and wisdom for the battles of the day. And I would have passed him by again if I didn't hear him say, I miss my time with you, those moments together. I need to be with you each day, and it hurts me when you say you're too busy, busy trying to serve me. But how can you serve me when your spirit's empty? There's a longing in my heart, wanting more than just a part of you. It's true. I miss my time with you and the Lord put those words into my heart many years ago when I was busy 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 serving him but not taking time to be with him and I had to slow down I had to recognize I wasn't spending the time with him that I used to and so I had to change my thought processes and my prayer life and my devotional life 
until it got to where I could say, speak to my heart, Holy Spirit. Give me the words that you want me to say and show me how you want to use me this day. And when I did that, I wasn't quite so busy anymore. I made time to give him the first of my day. I made time to give him the end of my day and all of the other moments in between as he would speak to my heart. So today, as we're continuing to prepare for his coming, not just as he was born in a manger many, many years ago, but for his second coming, because he's coming back again. And we need to be ready for that as well. We can't make an excuse when he comes back and say, um, I knew you were coming, Lord, but I was just a little busy doing stuff for you. That won't work. I was going to do this, Lord, but I didn't get around to it. That won't work either. So tonight, Heavenly Father, we ask your forgiveness for all of the times that we have made excuses in not listening to what you have asked us to do. When you speak to our hearts, when you speak to our minds, when you try to get us to give you more time than just a few minutes a day. So tonight, Father, we're asking that you change our focus, change our hearts, and change our minds so that we will be willing vessels that you can use, vessels that you can call on to speak your words to those that need to hear them. Vessels that you can use, our hands, our feet, our gifts, our talents, to do what you need us to do, to be ministers for you in this empty world. Help us in all the areas where we are lacking, that we feel confident and strong enough with your strength to do what you need us to do. We place ourselves willingly into your hands, knowing that that is the safest and most capable place to be, especially in the world today. We surrender ourselves to you this evening, and we ask that you do what you need to do in our lives. In Jesus' name, 